What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 14.0.1 just over a week after the release of iOS 14. Now along with this update, Apple also released iPadOS 14.0.1, watchOS 7, 0.0.1, macOS Catalina 10.15.7, and tvOS 14.0.1. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS 14.0.1, and I will also briefly mention watchOS 7.0.1 as well. So we're gonna talk about the fixes, the performance, the battery life, and more. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So first off, you can see the size of this update is just over 170 megabytes here on my iPhone 11 Pro Max, and the size should be about 100 to 200 megabytes bytes on all devices but of course it will vary depending on your device and since this is a point of a point update 0.0, .0 0.1 that means that it's pretty much always going to be strictly bug fixes. And of course, Apple does tell us right there, includes bug fixes for your iPhone. So we're not expecting any type of new features or anything visual new in this update, just a lot of bug fixes. So let's check out the build number for 14.0.1 and settings general about 14.0.1. You can see the build there is 18A393. And then the modem firmware remains the same. So if you were having any type of connectivity issues in iOS 14, those will not be fixed in this update because the modem firmware has not been updated. All right, so now what's new in iOS 14.0.1? And Apple actually did give us a change log of all the things that have been fixed in this update, but I'm gonna start it off with something that's not included in the bug fixes because it was actually something pretty bad that happened when I first installed iOS 14.0.1. So I installed it on my device and then I tried to connect my AirPods Pro here and they simply just would not connect at all. And actually this is what I got when I try to connect my AirPods. It says, not your AirPods Pro, and it says they have not been connected to this iPhone, which is weird because I had no problem with them on 14.0, and I use them every single day, pretty much all day, and I've never had this pop up, you know, so of course I did have to reset it on the back, and then it connected, but it was just really strange because that has never happened to me before with my AirPods Pro on this device. And unfortunately, that was not the end of it. So even when I put the AirPods in and started listening to my music, the audio would cut out a little bit, and at one point it just completely stopped. Like it would show that the music is actually playing, but it wouldn't be playing through my AirPods. And I had to go into here and connect to my AirPods Pro again to hear the audio again. So just some really weird issues with the AirPods Pro pretty much instantly after I updated to 14.0.1 and I had none of these issues in iOS 14.0. So definitely gave me a you know bad taste of iOS 14.0.1 to begin with. So if you do have AirPods Pro, just beware that that is possible to happen to you as well. Now, with that being said, this new update does fix one of the annoying bugs in iOS 14.0, and that was where you would get the notification that your AirPods are connected every time you unlock your device. So every time you would unlock your device, it would show you a little pop-up up top saying that your AirPods or AirPods Pro are connected. And it got really annoying because, you know, you didn't need to see that every time you unlocked your phone. So I can confirm that that has been fixed here in 14.0.1, thankfully. Now, another fix in iOS 14.0.1 one is a fix for the default application. So if you set default applications, maybe you have like Chrome and you set this as your default browser. Well, actually in iOS 14, when you would set a different default browser, so like Chrome, or if you have you know, a different email set up and you would reboot your device, after you reboot it and came back, it would revert back to default settings. So it would revert back to Safari as your default browser. So iOS 14.0.1 fixes that. And now when you set your default browser to something like Chrome and you reboot your device and you come back, it will still stay on Chrome and it won't revert back to Safari. Now iOS 14.0.1 does also fix a major issue with Wi-Fi. So this is not an issue that I had, but I have seen multiple people comment on this and just people on social media talking about how on iOS 14.0, they simply could not connect to Wi-Fi like at all, certain Wi-Fi networks. So that has been fixed here in this new update. So you should not have any issues connecting to Wi-Fi anymore. Now there were also issues with the news widget in iOS 14.0 and those seem to be fixed here in 14.0.1. So there were issues basically where photos just would not show up properly or not show up at all. So sometimes it would just be like an invisible image right there. It wouldn't be invisible, but it would just be like a placeholder where you can tell an image is supposed to go and it would just be blank. So now that is fixed 
in both the home screen and also in the widgets if you go over here to the widgets and what is that screenshot that's why i hate the photos widget it picks like the worst photos ever so anyways uh so yeah so it fixes the issue with the news widget right here where it would not show images properly now this update also fixes an issue that could prevent camera previews from displaying on the iphone 7 and iphone 7 plus so you iphone 7 users if you had issues with camera previews not displaying properly that has been fixed here in this new update as well. And then you can see Apple also says that this update resolves an issue that could prevent sending email with some mail providers. So I guess some mail providers were not able to send emails. I never had that and I had never heard of that bug, but that has been fixed, which is good news if you do use mail on your phone, which I'm sure most people do. And then another issue I've seen reported in iOS 14.0 that I cannot confirm has or has not been fixed in this update is that with group FaceTime, sometimes the panel, you know, like the panel with the effects and in call and things like that, sometimes that would get stuck when you tried to swipe it away. So if you do group FaceTime on 14.0.1 and you had that bug in 14.0, let me know if it's been fixed in this update. And of course, I'll try it out myself as well. I never had the bug to begin with, but I'm gonna try to you know, get that bug on 14.0.1 to see if it has or has not been fixed. But if you had that issue, let me know in a comment below if it has been fixed in this update. Now, for those of you with a laggy keyboard, that could also be fixed in this update. So I've seen a lot of people report that their keyboard just lags. Like sometimes when they go into messages for the first time, it would just lag and they wouldn't be able to type right away. It would be like a two or three second delay. So that could be fixed in this update. However, a lot of people, even on iOS 13, said they had that issue. So it's not necessarily an iOS 14 issue. So let me know if that's been fixed, but it could be for some people. And then of course you can expect to see random other miscellaneous bug fixes in this update as well. So like maybe some minor things with the UI or just minor things that, you know, maybe weren't even worth mentioning in the release notes or the change log for this update. So expect to see a lot of bug fixes. Don't expect to see a lot of new features or changes that you can visually see like things in settings or new widgets or anything like that. Now, as far as the performance goes, I would expect that iOS 14.0.1 will be faster or at least feel faster because of the amount of bug fixes in this update. So I would expect that I am running a Geekbench score here as well to see if these scores have improved over iOS 14.0. This of course does not always tell the whole story, but it kind of gives us a benchmark to base, you know, the performance off of. All right, so you can see there, we got a 1335 single core and a 3182 multi-core. So some very nice scores there and definitely a bump up from iOS 14.0. So it will feel faster on your device than 14.0 did, which is always a good thing to have. Now, as far as battery life goes, that's one thing where I cannot tell you one way or another if it's better or worse, just simply because I have not had this installed for long enough yet. However, I would not expect a major improvement to the battery life in this update. That's probably gonna come with like the 0.1, the 0.2, and the 0.3 updates, not just point of a point updates. So I would temper expectations for battery life improvements in this update. However, it seems like most people do have good battery life in iOS 14, especially if you watched my battery saving tips video where I went over 30 plus new tips and tricks for iOS 14 to help you get the most out of your battery life. Now, just to show you guys that more people had good battery life than bad battery life on iOS 14, I ran this community poll over on the community tab on my channel, and I asked, how has the final version of iOS 14 been running for you so far? And 52% of people out of 47,000 votes said, excellent, no annoying bugs and solid battery. And then 25% said good, 9% said decent, and only 14% are not on iOS 14 out of those 47,000 people. So thank you to everybody who voted and who also left a comment. There are a lot of comments on here as well. So if you wanna read about other people's experience, you can go over to the community tab on my channel and read through these. Now, as for watchOS 7.0.1, you can see here, it was just a 61 megabyte download. So a very small update, just like the iOS and iPadOS version. And it says it contains just one improvement and bug fix. And it says fixes an issue where some payment cards and wallet were disabled for some users. So that's the only bug that Apple says has been fixed in this watchOS 7 update. So 
I haven't really been having too many issues with watchOS 7 in general, so I didn't really expect to see a huge changelog here, but I know some people have been reporting pretty bad battery life, so hopefully that could be fixed here in this update as well, but it's too early to tell just yet. Uh, I'll report back to you guys if it's been approved in my follow-up video coming sometime this weekend or next week. Now, as far as the next iOS 14 update goes, I already talked about iOS 14.1 and iOS 14.2 and when I think those will be released. If you missed where I talked about that, it was in my iOS 14.2 beta one video and how we may not even see a 14.1 at all, except for on the iPhone 12 devices. And if we do see 14.1, it'll be after the new iPhones are announced. So if you guys want to see my full breakdown and my thoughts as to why I think Apple skipped 14.1, and went straight to 14.2 beta one. Just watch the beginning of that 14.2 beta one video. But I do think that iOS 14.0.2 is next, but honestly, who knows at this point? Apple just loves to throw curveballs our way. It's 2020, really anything goes. So we could see a 14.0.2 as early as early October, but of course we can expect to see iOS 14.2, the next beta, the second beta of iOS 14.2, most likely next week, but it's also possible to be the following week, the week of the 5th. So either the week of the 28th or the week of the 5th is when we should see a new iOS 14.2 beta update. And that will likely include all of the changes that we got here in 14.0.1 as well but yeah guys that's pretty much it for ios 14.0.1 not a lot changed but there is a lot fixed but also some downsides to this update as well if you have airpods i did have quite a few issues with my airpods and 14.0.1 but anyways hope you guys did enjoy this video let me know if you updated or not and let me know your experience down in the comment section below and if you guys enjoyed this video i would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and of course make sure you guys do subscribe so you don't miss the next ios 14 update video i cover them all here on the channel but anyways Anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.